In a previous video, we looked briefly at how to add events to calendars. Um, you can see that I have my two samples here. Note that, note that one of them appears in a block of color, and one simply has a bullet next to it. Now, I should have addressed this in a previous video, but I'll address it now. Basically, this one has a particular time associated with it, 7 p.m., and therefore it gets a bullet. Um, this one doesn't have a time, so I've said dinner with Joe, but since I haven't added that into the event, it only knows that this occurs on the 27th, on this particular day. And the two types of entries, the two types of events on my calendar, are distinguished uh, with this particular formatting, with this block of color versus uh, this colored bullet. Okay, let's say that I want to go in and edit my dinner with Joe entry, because I want to add a time to it. So I simply click on that in my calendar. Um, it opens up. Oh, look at this. It was smart. It picked a little dinnerish picture for me. Um, that's something fairly new. And it also gives me a set of controls here. So it's giving me the information that I have dinner with Joe that is on this particular date, and it's on this particular calendar. Again, this could have been put on, on other calendars as well. Um, I can click the X and that simply closes the window, leaves everything as it is. Okay, there's a trash can. Let's look at that one. So if I wanted to get rid of the event altogether, I could trash it. It would, it would disappear from my calendar. Let me do that. See, all gone. Okay. I can click the email guests. So I can invite people such as Joe by clicking this here. So I just simply put the email address here. There's a subject. I can type a message. And I can choose to send a copy of this to myself. So this can be handy. Okay. In the three dots, I can I can duplicate I can print this event for if for some reason I want it on paper. I could duplicate it. So if I click duplicate, you can see that it brings me into the screen we haven't seen before where I can add a lot more details and simply by changing this date maybe going to the 29th and saying save you can see that uh, there was a quick way for me to make the same entry now that didn't save me a lot of time um, but if I'd had a lot of additional information associated with this, if I'd had an address, if I'd had a time, if I'd added attachments to it, which I can do, um, if I had notes and locations and everything like that, then duplicating it would certainly save me a good bit of time. Okay, and then you can see that I can um, make a copy of this event to another calendar. I don't tend to do this a lot. I tend to put an event on the calendar where it needs to be. You know, I don't like duplicates because then if I go to edit something, I have to remember to do it in multiple places. But if you did have a need to copy this to another calendar, you could do it here. Um, you can also um, publish the event. So this is just going to get you either a hyperlink in HTML format, which means um, this can be embedded directly into the code of a web page. You know, this may look odd to you, this A target equals blank href. We're going to look at that um, in future videos because we're going to look at how, how to kind of hack that and use that in your calendar. Or here, this is just a, a link in a more traditional form starting with the HTTPS. So, you know, I could drop this into an email, etc. Or I could change the owner. If someone shared a calendar with me and say I, you know, the pre previous example, I was a softball coach for a team and we had events here and I had created some events and um, something's come up and I'm no longer going to be a coach of this team, I could simply transfer these events to someone else. They would become the owner. Now once I do that, I lose control of them. Uh, that person would have to change me back to the owner for me to get full control of them. Um, but there are circumstances where you might want to do that. Um, I don't find it that common with a calendar, per se, um, but it could happen. Okay, the tool we haven't looked at, and one that we would probably use most frequently, is the pencil. Okay, that lets you edit the event. So if I click Edit, it brings me to a screen that has a lot more detail than the one that came up when I created um, the original event. So you can see 
it gives me dates here, but now it gives me a date range. So um, I could leave this as the 29th, but I could also say I'm going to have dinner for uh, three nights in a row, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And if I were to save this, you can see that that's adjusted on my calendar. Other things we can edit in here, and we'll go into all these details in, in another video, is I could pick a time for it. I could add a location. Um, I could set this up for video conferencing. I could change my calendar here. I could change the um, color of the bullet that appears for this particular calendar. Um, I could add a description and more details here. So um, lo lots and lots of things that I could, I could do with this particular event. Um, and we'll look at those in the next video.